Okay, we'll flip over to the introduction screen here. So Donna Fairhurst. Donna is intuitive life soul coach, a Reiki master, a psychic medium, an empath, <clears throat> and an Uruk and chakra intuitive. Did I say that right? Uh, Uruk? Auric. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Having studied spiritual and healing modalities for 40 plus years. That's awesome. She embodies the highest degree of awareness, is particularly attuned to energy healing with Reiki, Chakra, and I'm going to get the, that word wrong again. Auric. 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 I think it should start with an O. Auric. Yes, it should. It would make more <laughs> sense, wouldn't it? It would help me. It help me out. Auric. <laughs> Resonance, uh, emotion, freedom, technique, and neuro neuro logistics. Neuro linguistic linguistics. Oh it's a mouthful. <laughs> As a life and soul coach, Donna is dedicated to achieving balance mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually with every client by combining psychic abilities, scientific aura imaging and multiple healing modalities. She empowers her clients to their highest levels of personal awareness to live aligned with true purpose and passion. And I have no doubt that's exactly what your clients feel. So I'm gonna dip out now and let you share your wonderful talk. Thanks, Donna. Thank you, Donna, see you in a while. Ah, well, hello, my beautiful souls. I'm so happy to be here now with you. I am. Those are very powerful words. In my world, I is intention, A is action, and M is manifest. So it is, and so it is done. What does that mean to me when I say I am? It means that every time I use those words, I'm creating the resonance, the space for miracles to happen for me. And they have. I'm here now with you. I'm better than I've ever been. I'm a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a sister, a friend, and so much more. I live in purpose on purpose. I'm in charge of my life. I decide what's important and what's meaningful. I set clear boundaries and I honor those of others. I surrender my will to divine will only. I am so grateful for the land that we stand on and the people that keep it and the ancient peoples that came long before us. They lived here on the land on purpose. Are you living a life on fire, inspired with passion, on purpose, in purpose, purposeful? Do you know that you have more than one purpose in your life? Whew, that's big. I know I struggled with these two simple questions for 50 years, and then it finally dawned on me. Our purpose is to live on purpose. Up to that point, I got a lot right and just as much wrong. My mind battled with my heart to connect in so many ways. If nothing else, I'm living proof that you can get so much wrong and still get it right sooner or later. You don't have to do that. I can help you autocorrect with a few simple tools. It's a choice, your choice. Welcome here with me now to live on purpose. Thank you for being here now, choosing to lean into this amazing gathering of healers and teachers on this first well-being experience 2020. Thank you, Shauna McRae, for allowing this to happen and creating the space and the base for us to all share and connect our own unique wisdom and modalities. I honor you, your willingness to explore your deeper levels of awareness. I'd like you to stay to the very end so I can share some special things with you. What we're going to do today is experience some of them together. This isn't going to be just a speech. It's going to be an experience. And we're going to use some of the tools in my Sacred Clarity Toolkit. I call it the Z2C, Zero to Clarity Toolkit. With it, you'll be able to connect to infinite unity, amplify your auric field, access your center of calm, and unite your sacred soul with your sacred self. These are just a few of the principles that I've downloaded from over 40 years of spiritual exploration 
three near-death experiences, and so much more. Without my name, I'm Donna Fairhurst, and I am a life and soul transition coach, a Reiki master, a psychic medium, an empath, and an angelic channel. I coach women and a few brave men struggling with transitions and challenges, the uncertainties that we're dealing with now, to harness the power of the lessons they've already chosen on their unique journey. Using my principles, they choose to live on purpose, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. You see, when you live a life of purpose with integrity and passion in spiritual alignment, your destiny is a journey. It unfolds before you with perfect synchronicity. There are two plaques on my wall that I treasure beyond measure. They were gifts from my husband when we started dating. We were discussing destiny and what that meant and if we were destined to be with each other. They're by W.J. Byron, my very favorite writer and poet. The first says, destiny is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. The other one reads, you nourish your soul by fulfilling your destiny. What is destiny? As a life and a soul coach with a PhD from the University of Life on Earth, I learned it the hard way. I'm not about where I've been or what I've survived. I've learned and grew through each learning curve, overcoming childhood blindness, polio, two devastating divorces, and the long life overseas. I lived in Southeast Asia for over a dozen years. I beat cancer and so much more. I know those challenges were simply stepping stones to that very moment, the moment I couldn't turn away from me anymore, the end of dithering, the end of withering, the end of ignoring my higher self and acknowledging my true purpose. Whew, it was a tough time. I just spent 12 grueling, soul-destroying months ending 23 years of marriage. I turned 45. I was feeling tired, lonely, mired in doubt. It was the years, the span of 1996 to 1997, the lowest and bleakest, ugliest point in my life. I can remember the day I found it. I found myself and my purpose. The power was out. It was black as pitch. And I found myself sitting on the top stair of a dark, dank, moldy, freezing cold basement. I was clutching a flashlight in one trembling icy hand and hanging on to the shaking stair in the other. It had been raining for days in Southern Alberta and we were well into round two of two years of devastating floods. I had an 800 gallon water tank weighing nearly 7,000 pounds full. It was sitting in the southwest corner of this very basement, and it had been filled that morning before I left for work. When I returned, it was, I found it dark, the power out. The tank was turned on its side by the force of sewer-laden water rushing around and filling up the basement. 7,000 pounds, and it was bobbing around like a float on a fishing line makes me shudder to remember it. A thick rope was tied to the top of the cover to raise the lid for filling. It was dangling and whipping around in the swirling black water, all the while slowly snaking up the stairs towards me as the filthy water rose. It seemed alive, like it was begging me to reach out for it. I'm a psychic and an empath. A gruesome, vis a gruesome vision passed in front of my eyes. It was like a hologram in front of me. I saw me tangled and crushed by the weight of the water, the tank slamming against me and up against the stone walls as I drowned. And I woke up. I only had to wrap the rope around my neck and step off the stair. In that dark, horrible moment, it felt totally right, totally rational. And yet I knew it was irrational at the same time. I wondered if it would be believable enough. The rational part of me wanted my children to get my insurance. The irrational part of me didn't care. I sat there hugging the top stair and watching the water pouring into my century old cellar for the second time that year. And I realized I was sitting here seriously considering suicide. I was isolated and depressed. 
I was drinking too much. I was up to my ears and floundering in a business wrapped up in sordid lies and layers of betrayal, others and my own. My marriage was over. I'd just ended, well, been dumped actually, from a short misaligned relationship after that, that destroyed what little bit of self-esteem I had left. My son was far away in the Caribbean, launching a career he loved and unable to connect very often. My beautiful daughter was completing high school and living with my wonderful mom and my amazing sister and brother-in-law by necessity and choice. She couldn't live with me. She didn't want to be in the town I was in where there was so much drama and trauma. I felt I had nothing left. I felt I had no one left to lose. I was drowning in victimhood, wallowing in shame, spewing blame everywhere and hiding guilt. And I was full, full to the brim of fear for my future. The sad truth, the saddest truth, much of it was my fault. It all started from choices I made. I had long before stopped trusting my GPS, my intuition, myself. I stopped making good, solid choices for myself. I could have prevented much of what happened to me. Have you been there? Have you done that or experienced anything similar? I know most people have. We all have that point where it's enough and we have to make a choice. You've heard that famous game show, Phone a Friend? I did. Thank God I did. I phoned more than one friend. I phoned Kathy the first time. I phoned Dawn and Aileen the second time. I phoned my beautiful sister the third time, my mom the fourth time. This isn't rocket science. I kept seeking guidance, developing a deeper personal spiritual practice that worked for me, and I worked it for dear life. <laughs> Pardon the pun. I had to do that more than once, and more often not than not, I realized that this was a journey. Purpose is not a destination. Rather, it's a choice. Life is not a game show, even if it feels like it sometimes. Not many people are going to win a million dollars for answering a few trivia questions. Life is a journey with many twists and turns, choices, good and bad, that we all make. I know now that in hindsight, it is also a gift as long as you use it to make better choices going forward. Think about it. Do you feel it? I'm not talking about vegging through a tough day with Netflix. I'm not talking about a bad day at the office. I'm not talking about whether you get along with your mother-in-law or this person or that person. I'm talking about your life. How you live it is your choice. Choice, choice, choice. You can choose to make powerful pivots and live on purpose with a few simple tools. You can create truth with a great toolkit. The truth, my truth is that I already knew there was an afterlife full of love. I'd been there many times. Remember I told you I had three near-death experiences? I'm not afraid of death. I've never been afraid of death. I was tired to death of trying to figure out my purpose for living. The truth is, life is not about finding your purpose. It's about living your life on purpose, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever you have, in that manner that's in the highest good of you and all concern. You see, living is like a layer cake. It starts with a choice. You can buy one that's made by someone else, their choice, their recipe, their ingredients, on their terms. Or you can be bold and create your own. When you create your own, you get to pick what looks good, smells, feels, and tastes good for you. You choose what feeds and inspires you to be a better, happier you. The bonus is you can share it with other people if they like your cake. First, you choose what kind of cake you need or want to create. You gather the necessary tools to create the finest cake imaginable. You find a recipe to work from. You search around 
there's lots of great recipe books out there. You've heard the previous speakers talk about teachers and great wisdom keepers that they've leaned into, still lean into, learn from, and now teach from those experiences. Those are the ingredients to set up your life. So select the best ingredients available and work with diligence and joy. Choose calm. And above all, have faith in yourself and the recipe. You find purpose as the cake evolves from just a thought to a plan, one step at a time, all the while manifesting something beautiful before your eyes that you never had before. Once you've done it a few times, you begin to understand the mechanics and the principles involved. You see, with intention and practice, you create success. With each success, big or small, you see your cakes get better and better. Then you take bigger risks with certainty that you have the tools in a basic recipe that works. You play with spices, different flours, different pans, different fillings, different icings. And as you step into larger roles, your capacity to visualize and to create different projects increases with confidence. Your ability to manifest with ease increases. You live on purpose, in purpose, with purpose. That is the purpose. You redesign the tools you started with, refining and making them uniquely your own as you craft your cakes. Like your cake, life is consumed day by day, and only the memories and the recipes remain. What kind of cake do you want to create? What legacy do you want to leave behind? What recipes for success and a life on purpose will you teach your family, your friends, your co-workers, and the world? Oh, so beautiful. Aside from my children and my beautiful marriage to my amazing husband, Frank, my greatest, excuse me, I just need a drink of water. Mm, so good. My greatest cakes to date or what I'm doing here now, and my, the soulful solutions I create with my Life on Purpose programs. I've developed my group coaching, my Z2C toolkit, and the principles that I've gleaned from my 69 plus years of spiritual exploration. I've leaned into so many teachers, some of them becoming firm friends. Wayne Dyer was one of them. The principles that I've gleaned from my journey and that I've created from my life are I am, infinite unity, zero to clarity, the calm principle, sacred soul self, grace, surrender, and many more. You can use these ingredients and choose to create a wondrous cake, a life on Paris purpose. Experience yourself as a human being and not simply a human doing. The difference between doing and being is simple. With one, you get a life of doo-doo, that's doing. And on the other, you get a life of purpose, that's being. Are you a human doing or a human being? Step into your purpose. Take your life by the horns. Embrace a few simple steps to live on purpose. If you're ready, let's explore. Let's share some simple pivots for a life on purpose. There's way more than seven, but for the elements of time that we have here, seven is what we're choosing. So the first one is keep it simple. Life is complicated enough. Even without going into overdrive and overload, we have more and more that we need to do every day. If your daily activities are taking you down, rather than lifting you up, choose different activities. It might be your job, it might be your spouse, it might be ironing every damn shirt because that's what your grandmother and your mother did. Think about it. What are you doing that no longer serves you? If it no longer serves you, why are you doing it? The second principle is really a little bit harder to grasp. See results in your failures. See results in your failures. Most of us don't learn the easy way. When you look back on the legacy of your life from well down the road, you will always see 
that the hardest struggles, the things that took you down and laid you low, more often than not, led you to grace, led you to your greatest successes if you chose to walk away from the failures and not look back. Can you name one thing right now that you thought at the time was a horrific failure that in retrospect you saw now was one step towards your personal higher awareness made you a better person here now? That's big. Here and now. Exercise free will. Let me show you. Exercise free will. Our greatest gift is free will. Even creator and the angels will not interfere with our free will. Choice is a God-given gift. We get to choose what we believe, how we act who we choose to have by our side. Be aligned with your highest self to create your highest purpose with your greatest gift, choice. Number four, this is one that I failed at miserably for a lot of my life, even though I had these high psychic gifts and abilities. It's trust your intuition. Trust your intuition. Listen to your inner voice and guides and your angels. Trust that you know when you have a choice to make, a course correction that you need to do. You have the power to pivot and to make a different choice. Choose one action, even if it feels like the tiniest step, one tiny step in a new direction will take you to a place you've never been where you can make better choices to go forward with more and bigger steps. I know I can, I know I have, I know you have. You made a choice to be here today. That's a choice in the right direction. That's growing your self-awareness. This is a much harder one because we tell ourselves a lot of lies and we don't live from our truth. Number five is live your truth. Sometimes that's harder than it needs to be because we believe that we have to operate from other people's belief systems, other people's views, other people's points of reference, following other compasses. We don't have to. Your truth is your truth, not your brothers, not your neighbors, not your spouses, not your churches, not your teachers. Your truth is what resonates with you, for you, from you, that allows you to choose your purpose for being and live into it. Speak it from your heart. And most of all, be loving with it. Sometimes it's unfamiliar to us because we've lived from other people's truths for most of our life. Find your truth. Declare your truth. Live into it and from it with your highest degree of integrity. Ah, oh, this is one that I do every day and that we're going to practice a, a clearing pretty soon here. Number six is protect and grow your energy field. Protect and grow your energy field. You're a part of all that is. You're perfect and you're necessary to the field of infinite unity. Your energy will transition back into unity in another dimension. It's important to care for it in this life as you would your home or your car. In fact, your body is just a vehicle like your car that your soul sits in and rides through this life. You probably take better care of your body than you do your soul. Think about it. You wouldn't leave the house without caring for your physical body having a shower, washing your hair, brushing your teeth, putting clean clothes on, putting your best face forward, your best body forward. Your vehicle looks great. Do you, do you treat your energy field the same way? Do you brush it? Do you wash it? Do you clear it? Do you clean it? Do you strengthen and grow it every day in every way? with strong spiritually aligned practices. There's lots of ways to do it. Number seven, 
live here now. Now, not yesterday. Get out of the past. Do not live from your mistakes. Make choices that serve you now to manifest a better future for yourself. Think about it carefully. If you're mired in the past, living with regret, living with self-doubt or self-consciousness, you're choosing victimhood. If you're not living now here, you're living nowhere. That's that gap I talk about. The gap between now and nowhere. Actually, the gap is nowhere. It all comes down to the gap. Step out of the past and choose to live here now today with what you've got on your plate today. If you handle this 24 hours, these waking moments, to the best of your ability, with grace and love and peace and joy, with unity, compassion, purpose, you empty the gap. You're now here. And everything beautiful that you want in your life is going to come to you from that space. We're just a radio signal to the universe that's saying, here I am, and this is what I want. So when you say, I am, whatever comes after I am, please make it very positive or express it as a feeling. You see, feelings are the gifts that we have to be in discernment about where we are here now. You can choose here now. And you can express something that's negative as a feeling and get it out of your body. Get that dead, dead, dirty, sewer-laden energy out of your body, out of your field. So right now, we're going to have a little experiential process. I would like to share with you the first of the nine tools in my Zero to Clarity Toolkit. So just sit back, be gentle, relax, Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths and let this deep healing, magnifying prayer clear, connect, and focus your energy field. You can repeat it after me or simply listen to my words and breathe them in. It doesn't matter what religion, race, creed, or background you are. We are all unified in the field of intention now. Let's connect our infinite energies. I call forth my light. I bring forth my essence. My true self is now within and around me. Everything that is not me, I send back now with love to source, never to return again. I call forth my light. I bring forth my essence. My true self is now within and around me. The wisdom of ancient sacred soul is now revealed. The energetic signature of my immortal self brings me the truth I need. Source fills my field and bathes my cells, systems, and consciousness with pure light. This light fills my heart. I am light. I am coherence. I am unity. I am peace. I am love. I am that I am. So I am.
The sound you're hearing is the resonance of all seven chakras. The sound that you're hearing is from a chakra bowl that resonates with every chakra. The sound that you're going to hear now is the sound of infinite connection to your angels. And now you'll notice the two sounds reaching towards each other and blending together. And I'd like to call in our angels. So please stay relaxed with your eyes closed. And as you close your eyes, feel gently into the field around you. Feel what's very close to you. And either repeat after me or in your head, just follow the words. I offer a moment of my presence, attention, and love to the angels who surround me. I invite you into my life and into my home. I am grateful for your blessings and gifts of healing and abundance wherever I go, however I choose, in every area of my life, here now. I ask that these blessings reach out and encompass all the people in my life with whom I connect to create love, health, peace, joy, purpose, compassion, and understanding in that manner that is in the highest good of all concerned. Staying in the zone, and I'd like you to put your intention to the crown of your head. This is your crown chakra. It's located right in the center of the top of your head, the area where source energy, creator, God, whatever that is to you, where that energy comes in and enters the body. Follow the words of this affirmation. I am a soul of the universe, perfectly designed in every way. I serve the highest good of my personal spirit and that of my creator. I am fully committed to bringing light, love, peace, and balance to humanity and the earth in that manner that is in the highest good of all concerned. Take a breath in. And so it is, and so it is done. And now take your attention to your third eye, located in the middle of your forehead, directly above the center space between your eyebrows. That is the seat of your intuition, your inner knowing, the place that always sends you that signal that you sometimes or sometimes don't pay attention to. And repeat after me, or just listen to the words. I look for the beauty in all things, well willing to see the truth. I see into life for its hidden treasures. I see divine spirit behind all creations. And so it is, and so it is done. Now I want you to picture beautiful, beautiful sky blue, the deepest, most perfectly clear sky blue you can ever see. And focus your attention on your throat chakra, the area between the bottom of your chin and your collarbones. That's your throat chakra. I speak my truth clearly and without hesitation. 
I listen with discernment and compassion for the true communication of others. I am ever open to hearing the voice of my higher self. And so it is, and so it is done. That's, be that's beautiful, Donna. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're wonderful. <laughs> Aren't you? I always feel all. Yes, yeah, true. We all are. I feel so peaceful, though, after being around you and I love oh, that shine. That's wonderful. Do we have time to continue with the heart chakra? Well, uh, uh, Dale's starting right now, so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, reach out to you and get more of uh, the more of Donna. So okay. I will definitely share information about you. And thank you so much for participating today. I really value you and all the gifts you have and your awesomeness. Thank you so much. You have the power to pivot. We all do. <laughs> Absolutely. Take thank care. You. you too. Bye. Bye.